Hello everyone, welcome back to the second and uh, probably the last video of uh, Hugo 3 Jungle of Doom. As I mentioned before, this is not a long game. Uh, I'm starting here from the command prompt again because I just want to hear that uh, that intro song one more time. It's just, it's so good. It's such a wonderful piece of DOS music. Let's just run the game again and hear it one more time. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so, it's just so lovely. It's just, it's just such a wonderful little piece of music. Somebody did, did also request that I try to sing it. Um, I think I could sing it better when I was young. Um, it's, I, I, I can, let me give it a try. It's something like... Okay, I, I think I did that better 20 years ago. Today, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little older. You know, people get older and their, their vocal range starts to suffer. I actually uh, remember, many of you may remember uh, Edward Hill, uh, who was the, the guy who became famous for the uh, Trollalolalol meme. You know, the guy who was saying the... that guy um there was a video that he made shortly before he passed away and they asked him to sing the song again and he 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 gave it a try and you know i mean I, i'm sorry to say he just he, he he had just kind of lost it like he he just you know he was how old was he he was in his 70s or 80s even he just you know he kind of lost his uh, lost his vocal range it's kind of sad to see i mean he gave it a try and it just wasn't uh, yeah so it's kind of like that with me i mean i'm i'm 41 so i i haven't lost all of it yet but uh i'm, I'm getting there I'll, I'll get there soon enough anyway let's go let's go back to where we were so this is where we left off last time um so yeah i just got in that book which was hidden away in that uh, corner there behind the the plants so anyway all right so what haven't we seen yet pretty much we just haven't seen that village yet there's that native village that we need to visit so let's go there and check things out yes what do we have here you're at the outskirts of a native village by the way i remember I distinctly remember when I reached this point in the game. I, I, when I first played this game, I was, you know, I was fairly young. I was a teenager, like, you know, mid, like I was probably like, what, 15, something like that. And um, I remember just, um, I hadn't played a lot of good adventures lately because uh, this was, you know, this was kind of a, a dark period of, of, of my life. I mean, Dark period of my life. I was 15. Yes, very dark period of my life. I mean, well, it, it sounds kind of funny, but I'm not really joking. Anyway, um, I, I just remember seeing this, and I hadn't really experienced a good adventure for game for for a while. And I remember seeing this and just thinking, you know, this, this is the kind of game that I want to play. This, this is the kind of graphics that I want to see in my games. And this is the kind of experience that I want to have where, you know, you can just walk into places like this and explore and just see the, you know, just see what's going on. Just kind of see the, see the, the wonder of these, uh, you know, these little inhabited places with the people walking around. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of a mini version of Quest for Glory 2. It's kind of a mini miniature version of Shapir from Quest for Glory 2. I mean, it's just like one screen, but, oh, this, oh, umba wala um jumba. Okay. Um... Not sure whether I agree with that opinion. It's kind of a hot take, but uh, okay. I mean, you, you may be right. It's just you know I haven't really thought about this, but uh, okay. I'll, uh, I'll I'll accept your your opinion. Oh, I see you don't speak our tongue. I should guess from your strange clothes, I suppose. Okay. Is that a is that a woman or I, I, I don't know if that's a woman or a man or. Anyhow, welcome to our little community here. No, don't be frightened. We're not headhunters or cannibals, you know. Oh, okay. It uh, I pressed enter to clear the message, and it also sent that command. You're in the native's village. The witch hunter, the, the witch hunters, <laughs> the witch hunters, the witch doctor's hut lies to the right. You can see a wild beast being roasted over a fire, and at the rear of the village, some natives with a blowpipe. All right. Can I talk to? Okay. I keep trying to enter commands to talk to this person, but they keep talking to me unprompted. No, although I must warn you most strongly not to venture into the witch doctor's hut. It's a full moon tonight, and he tends to go rather crazy. Okay. 
you know, fly. I'm going to assume that means I need to go into the witch doctor's hut. Just going to assume that that, uh, that warning means the witch, witch doctor's hut is exactly where we need to go. Well, as you can see, we're cooking, cooking supper here. It's roast hyena again. We had the same thing yesterday and the day before. Note that uh, in the 1990s, it was already common to use asterisks to uh, provide emphasis for words. Today, many programs will actually make words bold. Like, I think, I think Skype does this. I think if you're typing on Skype, if you in, uh, enclose a word or a passage in asterisks, that will actually make the passage bold. But asterisks have been used to, um, you know, to emphasize words in, in text for, for decades. Um, and also underscores, uh, using underscores around text because it, it kind of looks like an underline, so you can use underscores to look like you underlined something. And I, I think Skype does, I think Skype recognizes that as well. I think Skype turns underlined text into italics. So if you surround text with underscores, it will italicize that text. Anyway, um, is this working good? Yep, they are. In fact, I can't remember when we, when we didn't have roast hyena. It gets really boring, you know. If only there was something we could do to make it more interesting. Hmm. What do we have that might make roast hyena more interesting? You're not the first strangers we... Strangers. I mean, I, we're here with Penelope, but she doesn't really know because... Actually, hmm. I was going to say, I mean, there's another one of these people who's who's with Penelope, but I'm assuming that that other girl who whom we met when Penelope first got bitten by the spider, I'm assuming that girl is still with Penelope. So word probably hasn't gotten back to this village yet that there are two of us. So I don't think this woman has any way of knowing that we're not alone. But anyway, uh, you're not the first strangers we've had in our village, you know? No, not at all. What happened to the other ones? In fact, all the strangers were extremely friendly. Do you know every one of them offered us a gift of some sort? Okay, I guess that's also a hint. Of course, we always give them something in return. A fair exchange is no robbery, as they say. I'm going to guess that's a hint, that I need to give them something and they'll give me something in return. Typical sort of adventure game exchange puzzle where you give people something and they give you something in return. Basically, every adventure game puzzle ever. Oh, is that the witch doctor? I think that's the witch doctor in, the, in that window there. Probably him walking around in his witch doctor hat, or is that a hat, or a do you call that a hat, or a crown, or is it a mask, or I don't know. Anyway, what's our inventory? Uh, F six to, to view inventory. Okay, so um, F six. So we're carrying some clay, water flask, a sandwich, a crystal ball, spell books, some pins, bouillon cubes, an old scroll, and a golden bell. We could offer them a sandwich. Um, but I think what they want is not specifically something to eat, but rather something to spice up the hyena. And in this case, we knew that fairly, uh, fairly li uh, literally. So let's try and give them the bouillon, if I can spell that correctly. I, I hope I spelled that correctly. The native thanks you politely for your gift, but looks a little nonplussed. However, after you demonstrate its use on the meat, the natives are very grateful. The native hands you a blowpipe and some sleeping potion darts and warns, careful with these, there's enough potion to put an elephant to sleep. Well, if that's not a hint, I'm not sure what is. I'm not sure what is. But I think I think it's still a hint. Okay, cool, thanks. Can we talk to the native? Oh, doesn't do anything. Talk girl? Talk person? You get no reply. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess... I like how that person is still following us. I think she's done talking to us, but she's still following us. Are they... Is she? Oh, okay. I guess. Hmm. I guess she's topless. Um, gosh, it's kind of like National Geographic. I mean, I don't really see any drawn nipples, but I, I guess she's topless and just like the game doesn't really sexualize it. I mean, why? Should, I mean, it's not. It's, um, I guess it's not meant to be sexual. It's just kind of. Yeah. Okay. All right. I hope that YouTube doesn't restrict this video for nudity or anything like that. Okay, this just takes us out of the village, so I think, and going down probably does the same. Yeah, so going down or left takes us out of the village. If we go to the right, does that, is that the witch doctor there? Not the kind of guy you'd like to meet, you'd want to meet in a dark alley. I think that is the witch doctor. He's just kind of, let's talk to the witch doctor. You get no reply. All right, can I go to the right from here? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, well, this, this looks like the kind of building you'd want to walk into, doesn't it? You're outside the witch doctor's hut. I wonder how Hugo knows. How does Hugo know this is the witch doctor's hut? Oh, this takes us back again. Okay, I guess, okay, so it's just these two screens, right? If we go down, yeah, okay. So it's just these two screens. It's this and it's this. And then presumably what's, whatever's inside. So what's in here? Yee hee gotcha! Fruit. 
from this hour, you're in my power. Okay. Um, and now what? Are you going to do something else? What, what is he doing? Is, is, is he just... Is he, is he getting ready for something? Is he doing something? Or is he just staring at that shield on the wall? I mean, I've been locked in cages before, but usually after that happens, then usually people want to do something with you after the... I mean... I mean, I mean, yes, okay, I, I'm into this, but usually people kind of do something... Well, okay, I mean, yeah, okay, there are the people who, who do the whole sort of I'm going to lock you up and then leave you there for a few hours kind of thing. I mean, that's all... Yeah, some people are into that as well, but I don't think that's what's happening here. I don't think that... I don't think that's quite the turn that this game took. I feel like something something different's happening here, but I don't know what. Actually, it looks like nothing's happening. He's, he's just... He's not doing anything. He's just standing there. Um, yeah, okay. Um, here in the Witch Doctor's site, you can, you can see him over by his cooking pot. It looks pretty grim for you. Okay. You can also see a little cage. Oh, I think that's that red thing in the in the middle on the on the ground or on the... Is, is this... Would you say on the floor or on the ground? It's kind of both because I think the floor of this hut is just like... There, there's no flooring. It's just earth. Like, it is it is the ground. So it's it's both the... Usually if you're indoors, it's the floor. And usually if you're outdoors, it's the ground. But what if you're in a building where the floor is the ground? Then it's kind of both, I guess. Anyway, that red thing on the floor ground is that little cage. Oh, a golden candle. Oh, to the left, next to the cooking pot, there's a little candle there. Okay, cool. All right, can we get the candle? Since I think, I think you could while you're in the cage. Yeah, because I remember um, the book, the, the this book that we got, it had drawings of a bell and a candlestick. Well, we have the bell, but we don't have the candlestick yet, but I guess we know where to get it now. Wait, did I even, did I try ringing the bell? Ding dong, nothing happens, okay. I don't think I did that last time. I must have I actually got the bell and then forgot to ring it, wow. All right, um... Open door. Hey, you stay put, yells the witch doctor. Youch! The witch doctor just prodded you with his stick to make you think twice about opening the door again, opening the cage door again. Okay, um... Well... Hmm. Interestingly, it looks like the door is not locked. It looks like we could open it, but we just... Okay, that's interesting. He didn't... He didn't lock the, the cage. Maybe there's no lock on it. Maybe he doesn't have a way to lock it. He just kind of put us in there, and if we try to get out, he's just going to punish us. This is this is getting increasingly uh, this is getting increasingly sexualized. I realize that's not the intention, but this is this is literally like exactly how it works. Like somebody puts you, like somebody locks you up, and then just kind of leaves you there, and just just waits. And if you try to do anything, they punish you. But, you, but you, yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm I'm probably turning this family game into a. Actually, is it a family game? I don't know if this is a family game. I wonder if this is too scary for children. I mean, it's it's, it's not a it's not a real horror game, but maybe it's uh, maybe it is a little too scary for ki children. I don't know. Some of the things used by the witch doctor for his nefarious deeds. Their use is not readily apparent. Okay. Um, all right. I'm gonna guess that we have to rely on our inventory here. So let's go back to our inventory. So we have some clay, a water flask, blowpipe, and darts. Can we hmm? Can we shoot him with the blowpipe? Crystal ball, spell books and pins, a sandwich, old scroll, and a golden bell. You know, I'm going to save here. I'm just going to see what happens. Doesn't mean that you'd want to shoot with your, with your blowpipe. Really? What about the doctor? I explicitly said the doctor in, in my command. All right. Um, well, I think I said before when we got the, the stuff from the airplane, it's a little bit apparent. It's kind of, I don't, know if, I don't know if I would say it's obvious, but if you kind of think about the situation and the setting here, it becomes sort of apparent that you're, you're supposed to, it's supposed to invoke some kind of sense of voodoo or whatever. Although, isn't voodoo from Africa? I mean, this is really, this is all more like a, an African jungle kind of setting with, you know, with elephants and voodoo. And technically, we did not crash in Africa. We're in South America. This is like probably Brazil or, or maybe Argentina. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, what you're supposed to do, and I don't know if there's any hint for this. I think I actually figured this out myself. I think this is, it's not, like I said, it's not necessarily obvious, but if you kind of think a little bit about the setting, it sort of becomes circumstantially apparent. Yeah, it's the kind of clay is used to mold shapes with. So can we mold a shape? Eh? Mold clay. 
make shape with clay? As if guided by some unseen force, your hands quickly mold the clay into an effigy of the witch doctor. Oh boy. And now it's pretty obvious if you know anything about, you know, classical sort of, classical, I mean, popular stereotypes about voodoo, put pins in clay. You feel as if something dark and sinister just happened. The doctor... I don't know why I don't know why he does this. He, he comes to us and then he comes running to us and then lies on his back. I'm not sure why. And if I open the cage, yeah. Like that might make sense from the game's perspective if he had the keys on him and if we needed to get the keys off his, you know, off his body or something, but I don't think we can even You can see writhing on the floor where you managed to incapacitate him. Yeah, I mean we don't even need to do anything with his body, so he could have just fell down. He could have just fallen down where he was. He didn't need to run over to us and then. Anyway, all right, let's see what we can get. So let's get the cage. Oh, it's more useful right where it is for now, is it? Hmm. You might have noticed there is a a rat, or maybe it's a mouse. It's not coming out now, but I mean, you, you, obviously there are two mouse holes on the right, and you might have seen there is a little mousy or ratty or whatever who, yeah, see, there he is. And he kind of, yeah, see, he kind of avoids where we are. So it's like if, we, if we're on the right side, he goes out the left hole, and here he goes out the, can I look at the mouse? Something special about it. Okay, I guess just a regular mouse. Okay, before we before I forget, I mean, okay, I probably won't forget, but let's let's just get the candle. Let's look at the candle. If it's golden and very heavy, the flickering of the candle feels comforting even in the daylight. All right, fair enough. Can look at the pot. Let's see, whatever's cooking pot being heated by fire. Whatever's cooking, it smells revolting. Uh, eat from pot. There's no point. All right. Is this spider alive or dead? I mean, the spider's just kind of hanging there, but. It'd be an incredibly stupid act. I mean, I can't tell if that's a live spider or something, because there's so much dead stuff here. I don't know if that's something that the... Uh... Anyway, okay. So the setup here is fairly clear. Um, we've got a cage here. We've got a mouse that sticks its head out of the those mouse holes. And obviously the idea here is, I guess, we want to catch the mouse. That's That seems fairly obvious. And then it's not a, a big stretch. It's not a big, big stretch if you look at your inventory to think, okay, the mouse probably wants something to eat. So let's go ahead and put the sandwich, if I can spell it correctly, into the cage. Okay, and now obviously since it's on the left side, let's come out this side and let's just wait a little bit. I think the mouse should not have any great issues with, oh, there he goes. The mouse runs excitedly over to the little cage and starts eating the remains of the cheese sandwich. The, the cage slams shut, trapping the mouse inside it. All right, so yeah, that puzzle wasn't too difficult. That's kind of, that was kind of a fair puzzle, I think. That puzzle wasn't, wasn't bad. That puzzle was okay. What's all these snakes? Like, can we actually look at the these snakes here? One snake looks much like any other. It's kind of long and thin and has two ends. Yes. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a saying in German: everything has its end. Only a sausage has two. But snakes do as well, as do other things. Uh, anyway, all right. Um, yes, you can make jokes about sausages that only have one end if you're um, thinking about that kind of sausage. Anyway, all right, so what do we have here? We have very, very obviously been told that there's a connection between the blowpipe and the elephant. So since we're done in that native village now, I think we've done everything that we need to, at least the, everything that I could figure out to do there. Let's go ahead and just save here, and let's go ahead and shoot the elephant with the blowpipe. Okay. All right, that doesn't seem to have done very much. Um, they said there's enough. Oh, after all, the sleeping potion has its effect. The, the elephant falls fast asleep. Okay. Do elephants sleep standing up? The only hint that the elephant is asleep is that it's closed its eyes, which is fine, but it's just sitting there minding its own business. Can we ride the elephant now? Here, not at the circus. All right. Uh, climb elephant. Climb on your strong board and you fail miserably. All right. Get elephant. Logical thing to do. To be honest, I don't think it would fit in your pocket. Hey, come on. It's an adventure game. That's how things work. You put things in your pockets in adventure games. That's how adventure games logic works. Okay. Um, 
I think that's kind of a clue in itself that it takes a while. I mean, you, you can see, obviously, it does take a while for the elephant to fall asleep, so it, it doesn't fall asleep instantly after you shoot it. So that's probably, like, part of the puzzle. But what else do we have in our for? Maybe there's something else we can use. Well, there's a classic sort of, um, again, a stereotype or trope or whatever that elephants are afraid of mice. I don't think it's true, actually. I don't think elephants really are afraid of mice. I think... Uh, I think that's a an, an urban legend or whatever, or not an not an urban legend, but a a, a legend, a myth. Um, but um, it is popularly believed, and since this game does run on stereotypes, let's go ahead and restore the game and let's try this now. Let's go ahead and shoot elef shoo not show shoot elephant with blowpipe. Okay, and quickly before. Um, Oh, you need to put it down first. Okay, we can't just open the cage. Here. Okay, put down cage. Okay, now open cage. That's another thing that I sometimes sum to myself. Like when, when I'm in a hurry, like this elephant is, or if something goes wrong, I'll say... And I get that from this game. There's, there's a lot of stuff that I get from this game, I guess. In, ter in terms of music that I sing to myself on a daily basis, not on a daily basis, but on a, you know, in real life situations. I guess I get a lot of such tunes from this game. The little mouse has scared the elephant with two exclamation marks. You watch in amazement as the elephant lumbers off in the direction of the stream. That elephant's not really lumbering. It seems like it's kind of making haste. The effect of the sleeping potion in, in the dart is starting to have an, its effect on the elephant. It slows down and eventually stops right in the middle of the stream, damming the water completely. Hey, cool. Hey, check it out. The stream appears to have been downed rather efficiently by a large elephant, which, appe which appears to be sleeping peacefully now. Well, I'm pretty sure we were supposed to do that because we got points for it, so let's go ahead and save. Damn! And, um, it's not a great stretch to think... Oh, can we get the mouse back? I don't think so. The mouse won't let you. Can we get the cage back at least? Not close enough. I don't think I need the cage, but I'm wondering, do I get points for getting the cage back? There's no point since the mouse is gone forever. It's not gone forever. It's right there. Okay, we can't get the mouse back, so we, we can't get the mouse or the cage back. That's fine. We don't need them anymore. So, yeah, the whole point of that was just to, to damn the river. So, damn that river. All right. So, as I was saying, it's not a great stretch of the imagination to imagine that uh, this may have had an effect on that uh, other screen where we saw the river, namely this one here. So, remember, we couldn't go this way before. Now we can. Now now we can walk across the, the water here. At the waterfall base, the water appears to have stopped running, although the banks of the stream are too muddy to be no negotiated. It looks like you might be able to get across some stones at the base. Okay, so we... Ah, okay, these... Yeah, okay, we can walk across these rocks here. Very good. Okay. All right. I wonder if that counts as a puzzle in itself, figuring out how to walk across... I don't know. Anyway. Wow, look at this. Wow. You've arrived at the secret garden. Oh, oh, wow, this is the secret garden. The pool of rejuvenating water is here, amongst some very beautiful wild orchids which have grown huge thanks to the magic powers of the water. Wow. This is actually quite nice. Can, can we get an orchid? Much as many people would appreciate the flowers, I think some, some of you would prefer some magic water. Okay. All right. Shall we get some, uh, get some magic water for Penelope? What? Did I put water in the flask? Let's see. Can I say drink water? Put water in flask. There we go. Fill the flask with the magical water. All right, cool. I guess this is kind of like the magic fruit from King's Quest IV. Say, basically, basically this, is, this is King's Quest IV. It's uh, in King's Quest IV, King Graham became ill, and you had to get the magic fruit to save him that just kind of magically saves him. And then this game, Penelope gets ill because she got bitten by a spider, and you have to save her with the magic water. Just in time, you can hear the thunder of water as the stream starts to flow again. The elephant must have wake awakened and moved off. All right, we can never go back there, but that's okay because we don't need to. Um, so, um, I guess we have what we need now. We have the, uh, we have the, the water. I wonder, can we drink this water? Let me try this. Hmm, that really hit the spot. Now, what about poor Penelope? All right, I guess we just got ourselves into an unwinnable situation here. You can actually drink the water, and it, it hits the spot, but it uh, also means you can't win the game anymore. So let's go ahead and restore. So we got the water, uh, and what we should do is go back to Penelope, but that bridge that we crossed over collapsed. That bridge that we 
tied the vines to to support it while we were crossing it that bridge is gone and it, and it's really gone like it's not just damaged it's totally collapsed so we can't go back the way we came here uh what are we going to do there's no way back is there uh and we've already seen pretty much everything in the game what about this uh this ghost here this ghosty that uh this evil spirit that's guarding the cave um Oh, you gather the bell and candle together and read the spell from the page in the old book. Whoosh! An icy blast of air sweeps past you as the evil spirit is banished for good. All right, I'm getting so that we can enter the cave now. So, folks, if any of you are a little bit um, faint of heart, you might you might want to brace yourselves for this. This. Um, so, when we walk into the cave, we're going to see um, a figure who is a little bit. Um, he's a little bit. Um, I don't know. When I was a kid, he kind of freaked me out a little bit. Uh, this, this was, this is like the only, this was for me the only scary part of the of the entire Hugo games. Like of of all the three Hugo games, this is the only moment that kind of gave me a little bit of a fright. And it's it's not that scary. It's just a little bit of a shock because I wasn't expecting it. So you know, if you have some, uh, if you have any children watching this video, you might want to get the children off to bed a little bit early at this point. Just kind of tell tell them you know it's time to go to sleep and get them uh, get them snug in their beds before you continue the video. So let's go ahead and uh, walk into the cave here and be prepared for what happens. So that's, um, th this is the same old man whom we met in the previous games. Uh, in the first Hugo's House of Horrors games, uh, this is the guy in the, in the boat, or uh, not, not in the boat, but uh, like at the boat, at the water with the, the boat, and he has just those riddles. And then in Hugo 2, you may remember there was the same guy who uh, started asking Penelope a bunch of riddles, but before he had the chance to ask them, she just whacked him over the head and uh, knocked him out. So now in the third game, we finally see his face close up, and he, he's just a little bit freaky. I mean, he's not really horrifying. It's just when, when I was, you know, again, I was like a teenager when I played this game. I was a kid, so it, it freaked me out just a little bit. It's it's not that scary, but this this was like when he just suddenly popped up like that. Like, I wasn't expecting it, and that kind of freaked me out for, for a moment when I first played this game. So, yeah, that's that's it. This is this like the one moment in, in all the games that actually gave me a little bit of a, you know, something kind of that you could call a fright. Anyway. Ah, we meet again, my friend. Methinks I was a little hard on you the last time we met, so I fancy the table shall be turned this time. I know. Let's play a guessing game. But this time, you will ask the questions, and I will answer. If I answer correctly, you may pass. What a wonderful idea. Hee <laughs> hee. All right. Um, I can't see this going badly at all. Right. Hold something in your hands without showing me, and I'll have three guesses. Ready? Okay, here's my first guess. Is it an elephant? I guess we have to type. Uh, pretty sure it's not an elephant. Actually, what happens if I say yes? What? Open your hands and let me see. Aha! You lie! Did you really believe you could dupe me with your feeble trickery? Be gone from my cave and don't return until you've learned to tell the truth. Okay. I don't think I lost any points for that, so let's try again. Hey, buddy. Let's play that game of yours again. I'll be honest this time. Back so soon, eh? So you liked my little game. We shall try it once more. I didn't really like it, but uh, sure, let's give it a try. Okay, he guesses it is an elephant. Uh, no, it's not. Hmm, this is trickier than I thought. No matter, I'll try again. Is it a jewel-encrusted egg? No, I, I wish it was. I wish it, I wish it were, because then I, I could probably sell it for money. No, it is not, sir. Aha! In that case, I fancy I have the answer. Is it a flask of magic water? I wonder if I say no, what happens? Just for giggles, let's say no. Oh dear, I got all three guesses wrong. Now you have to go back outside the cave again. I feel so bad about this. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do much better next time. So long. All right. At least he gives us he, at least he gives us a few tries and doesn't seem like we get any punishment for for All right, let's try this again. So, uh, let's do this right this time. So, elephant, no. Jewel encrusted egg, no. Flask of magic water. Yes. Yes. Splendid! You win, my boy. Go upward on yonder rocks and you will emerge on the path to your sweetheart. Hurry now. The old man beckons you on. As you pass the old man, he whispers in your ear, Ah, I thought I'd never see my crystal ball again. I'll just take it off your hands. I really am most grateful to you, my boy. Oh, and he winks at us. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, the old man turned out to be all right after all. Or, well, all right is maybe stretching it. He turned out to be not, not as annoying as, as he was in the, in the first game. All right, hey, here we are, back at... Uh, this place with the spider web. All right. Um, give water to Penelope. I mean, I wonder if I give the water to Penelope or to the native girl. Let's try this. 
you administer the remedy. Hey, look at that. We got the maximum score. Max score. Yay. 128 points out of 128 possible points. Max score. I like I like it when I get the max score in adventure games because I'm picky. I'm, I'm OCD like that. The rejuvenating towers of the magic water revive our sweet Penelope. You trip merrily back to the plane, fill it with gas from the spare tank, and fly off homeward into the sunset. So this whole thing could have been avoided if Penelope just hadn't gone exploring. Like we could have just filled the, the we could have filled the gas, we could have filled the plane with gas and just just avoided this entire adventure altogether, but then there would have been no game, so. Nice. That same melody again. I love it. And so we say farewell to Hugo and Penelope for the last time. Let's hope they make it home this time. That's it. That was it. That was Hugo 3, Jungle of Doom. Yeah, so this has been the Hugo Trilogy. Good games. I like these games. I know, again, a lot of people say these games are very cheesy and amateurish. They are, of course, but, you know, that's part of their charm. That's part of the fun. They're, they're good games. I... Enjoyed these games. I can't say that I've spent a very large amount of time with them because you know they, they you know they play pretty quickly. You know you play them and then they're done and there's not much to there's not much left to do. I mean there's not much that we haven't seen. There's not a lot of replay value in this game because you know we've pretty much seen everything that there is to see and do. But still, it was fun. It was good for an hour of fun. I enjoyed it. Hope that you enjoyed it as well. So I guess that's it. I don't have much more to say other than thank you for watching as always, folks. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, this has been Hugo 3, Jungle of Doom. Uh, take care of yourselves, folks. Happy Halloween, Halloween. Uh, because that's, again, the reason why I played this game as a sort of uh, run up to Halloween. And uh, yeah, that's all, folks. I will talk to you all later. Take care of yourselves and each other. And goodbye for now.